Hello, second grade smarties, and welcome to Wit and Wisdom Module 2, The American West. So we are in Lesson 6, and we are starting a new book called The Plains Indians. So let's go ahead and get started with our essential question. And I love to think of it like a pizza. So this is our big pizza question. This is our whole pizza. We can't eat this in one bite. So we are taking time to answer this over time by exploring different texts that teach us about the American West. So here's our big pizza question. What was life like in the West for early Americans? Our pizza slice question. We also can't eat this in a bite, but we can eat it a little faster than a whole pizza. And our focus question is, what was life like for Plains Indians in the early American West? And the question we are going to take a bite of today and answer is, what do you notice and wonder about the text Plains Indians. So the first thing that we do when we read a new book is we notice and wonder. What does notice mean? Notice means that I can talk about what I see in the book or what I hear in the book. And what are wonders? Those are questions that we can ask. And we are going to explore some different ways to ask questions that we might have in the book in just a little bit. But before we start exploring this book, I want you to look at the covers of the book that we read last week and the book that we are going to read this week. So we have the cover of The Buffalo Are Back and our new book, Plains Indians. Now, I haven't showed you anything in this book yet. But just looking and thinking about what you already know from the Buffalo Are Back, what do you think these books will have in common? What will be the same about both of these books? Tell me in the Ed Puzzle. Both of these books are going to talk about Native Americans. So Plains Indians are the Native Americans that lived in the West. So we learned about the Native Americans in the American West and the Buffalo are back. Plains Indians is going to be a book that tells us about the American West and the Native Americans that lived in the West. What do you think might be different about these books? Tell me in the app puzzle. What do you think might be different? So something we might think is different is that the Buffalo are back. It told it, it told information in the form of a story. Now, do we know anything about Plains Indians yet? Not yet. So maybe it could be a book that gives us information in the form of a story, or it could be an informational text. We don't know yet. Also, something that is different about these books is that this book focused on how these settlers, how the Native Americans, how President Roosevelt impacted the prairie and the buffalo. This book, it looks like it's all going to be about who? The Plains Indians. So this is the first page in our book, Plains Indians. And what kind of books that we have read in the past have a table of contents. I want you to tell me in the Ed Puzzle, do literary texts, so books that tell a story, do those usually have table of contents or do informational books? Or do informational books have table of contents? Tell me in the Ed Puzzle. Informational books have a table of contents. It tells us what our topics are going to be and where to find those topics. So a table of contents, it gives us the topic and the page that we can find it. Now, I want us to think, what do we already know about Native Americans from our first book, The Buffalo Are Back? Tell me in the Ed Puzzle, what do you know already about Native Americans? We know that Native Americans were the first people to live in the American West. We learn that they took care of the buffalo and the buffalo took care of them by giving them food, clothing, and shelter. We learn that Native Americans, they took care of the prairie lands by keeping the grasses healthy, by burning it so those ashes could help the soil. 
we learned that Native Americans and the early American settlers had wars because of those broken treaties. And we also learned that the early American settlers killed all the buffalo, which meant what? the Native Americans had to leave their land after the Indian Wars. So what we are going to do is we are going to explore, we are going to explore the book Plains Indians. And we're only going to read small chunks of the book at a time because it is an informational text. And if you look really closely, it has 48 pages. So we're only going to read a few pages today. But before we do that, because every time we read a new book, we notice and we wonder. So when we wonder, we ask questions. What do all of these words have in common? So question words, who, where, when, what, why and how what do all of those what do all of those words have in common when do we use those words when we ask questions so when do readers and thinkers ask questions when we first start reading a book right so when we are starting a new book and we read it through the first time we talk about what we see and we talk about what questions we might have. So we ask questions when we don't understand a word. So vocabulary. We ask questions when we need to know more about the text. We ask questions when we want to think about what the author is telling us. We want to discuss the book with a friend. We ask questions when we want to think deeply about what we are reading. And we ask questions when we are confused about what is happening in a text. So a lot of times when we ask questions, it might be about words that we don't know. It might be about things that we're confused about. Sometimes we ask questions so we can talk about it with a friend. So we are going to practice asking wonders, asking questions. And I am going to read the first page of our book. And I want you to think about some wonders that you have. Who were the first people in North America? It sounded like an earthquake. A herd of bison charged across a grassy plain, their hooves rumbling. Hunters rode on horses at the edge of the herd. Skilled riders, they used only their knees to guide their horses. Each hunter was trying to get close enough to one of the bison to aim a killing blow at the animal's heart. The hunters knew that their families depended on the bison for food and clothing. These hunters were the early people of the Great Plains of North America. For many of the native peoples who lived on the Great Plains, hunting bison was a way of life. Today, bison no longer roam freely across the Great Plains, but the Plains Indians proudly keep alive many of their customs and traditions. I'm going to go back and I'm going to read the first sentence. And I want you to think of some questions that you might have about the sentence. It sounded like an earthquake. Hmm. What questions do you have when you hear that sentence? It sounded like an earthquake. Tell me a question that you have just about this sentence. It sounded like an earthquake. All right. So when you're thinking of your questions, think about how you could use a question asking about who, asking about people, where, asking about a place, when, asking about a time, what, what is going on? Why? Why is this happening? And how? How does that happen? So tell me in the puzzle, what is a wonder? What is a question that you have about the sentence? It sounded like an earthquake. So here are some different questions that we can ask when thinking about the sentence. It sounded like an earthquake. What sounded like an earthquake? What was making that noise? Why does it sound like an earthquake? Is it really an earthquake? So notice I'm using different question words. What? Why? How did the people feel when they heard that sound? Who heard that sound? 
And where does this sound happen? So these are all questions that we can ask just about the sentence, it sounded like an earthquake. These are wonders. These are questions that we want to try to find the answers to. So as we read, I want you to think about things that you see in this book. So notices. And I want you to think about some wonders that you have. Now, remember, we are not reading every page today. The pages that you see on the screen are the pages that we are reading. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. We're going to start on page five. American Indian or Native American. Sometimes the Native peoples of North America are referred to as American Indians. Sometimes they are called Native Americans. So which is correct? When Italian explorer Christopher Columbus came to the Americas in 1492, he used the name Indios or Indians to describe the native people. This was because he mistakenly believed he was in the Indies, an old term for Asia. Native American came into use in the 1960s as an alternative to Indian. Today, many of these descendants of the first people to live in North America would say that either term is acceptable. Better still, most would prefer to be identified by their unique group called a nation or tribe. For example, I'm a Cheyenne. Carl Venn, 1946 to 2009, was a leader of the Crow Nation of Montana. He worked to create opportunities for his people. So already I have a wonder, how many tribes are there? It talked about, it talked about unique groups called a nation or tribe. So how many tribes are in North America? That is a wonder that I already have. What are the Great Plains? The Great Plains area is an immense grassland in the middle of North America. It stretches from the Mississippi River to the Rocky Mountains and from Canada's Saskatchewan River to Texas. It covers parts of 14 United States and three Canadian provinces. Hmm, I wonder what is a province? The region's tall grasses bend in the strong winds that blow across the landscape. There are some wooded areas, especially along rivers and creeks, where willow and cottonwood trees grow. But none of the large forests found in other parts of North America exist in the Great Plains. While much of the region is flat, there are a few hilly areas. These include the Ozark Mountains of Missouri and Arkansas in the Black Hills of South Dakota. So right now, what I want you to tell me in the Ed Puzzle is one thing that you notice. I notice that there are no trees. I see that maybe these might be trees, but I notice that there are no trees. And that is what the text was telling us. Down here, it says tall grasses bend in the strong winds that blow across the Great Plains. So we use pictures to help us understand what the text is telling us. So I can't wait to see what your notice was. All right, page 10. Who are the Indians of the Great Plains? On the dry Western Great Plains, early Indians lived mainly by hunting bison. Instead of living in permanent villages, they often moved from place to place, following bison herds and gathering wild plants. They became expert hunters and came to depend on the bison for most of their needs. That's something we learned. Indian groups of the Great Plains. Some of the Plains Indians groups or tribes had once been farmers in the woodlands of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Iowa. These people include the Cheyenne, Arapaho, and So. Around 1400 moved to the Great Plains and adopted a nomadic lifestyle. Plains people roamed widely, but most tribes could usually be found in particular areas. For example, the Arapaho hunted mainly in Colorado and the Cheyenne hunted mainly in Wyoming. On this page, I want you to tell me something that you wonder. What is a question that you have? I wonder what is a nomadic lifestyle? What does the word nomadic mean? 
I also wonder why did the Native Americans use bison? Now we can find the answer to that question in the text, but I can still ask it, right? So maybe I could ask that question if I want to discuss it with you. Why did they use bison? Farm hunters of the Great Plains. On the Eastern Great Plains, more plentiful rainfall created conditions favorable to farming. Tribes in these areas raise crops such as corn, beans, and squash. Like tribes to the west, they also hunted buffalo, but they did not share the nomadic lifestyle of the Western Plains Indians. Because their farms provided much of what they needed to survive, they were able to live in villages for most of the year. The Wichita people lived along the Arkansas River. In the 1500s, they were among the first Plains Indians to meet Europeans. Further north were the Kansas people who migrated to present-day Kansas. From their original home east of the Mississippi River. What animals did early Plains Indians need? Plains Indians depended on several different kinds of animals to provide many of their daily needs. The bison was at the center of life for the early Plains Indians. The bison is the largest land animal to roam North America in modern times. Even though an adult weighs as much as about one ton or over 2,000 pounds, bison can still run at speeds of around 30 miles per hour. For thousands of years, bison roamed the Great Plains in huge herds. I want you to think about something that you noticed or heard on that page. What is something crazy that you heard on that page? Tell me in the Ed puzzle. I heard, I noticed that it said that bison can run at speeds of around 30 miles per hour. Hey, guys, people, most, if not all people, can't even run that fast. So bison, even though they're really big, they can still run very quickly. These enormous animals provided most of what Plains people needed to live. Plains Indians were experts at hunting bison and at making use of every part of the animal. The clothes they wore and the cone-shaped tents they lived in, called teepees, were made from bison hides. They sharpened the bones of bison and carved them into tools. They used the horns of bison to make spoons, cups, rattles, and toys. They braided the shaggy bison hair into rope. Of course, bison were an important source of food, too. After men hunted the animals, women cut up the bison meat. They preserved some of it for later by cutting it into long strips and hanging it to dry on racks in the hot sun. So that is what this picture shows. They cut the meat into long strips and let it dry. Once meat was dry this way, it could be stored for long periods without spoiling. The bison was like a walking store, providing food, clothing, tools, and more. Even bison waste was put to use. Plains Indians used it as fuel for their campfires. It says Plains Indians dried bison meat in the sun to preserve it for later use. This, use, this method is still used to dry meat today. All right. Transportation. Before they acquired horses, early Plain Indians traveled on foot. They relied on dogs to carry heavy loads as they followed bison herds across the plains. They loaded their supplies and belongings onto a kind of sled called a travoy. A travoy was made of two poles tied together in a V shape with strips of rawhide stretched across the V. The travoy was attached to the shoulders of a dog, which dragged the load behind itself. And it says to see the picture. So this was a travoy. What is something that you are wondering about this page? What is a wonder that you have about this page? A wonder that I have is how did they find dogs in the Great Plains? And what did the Native Americans carry in the Travoy? Tell me your wonder about this page. It could even be a wonder about the, the picture. Horses. The first modern horse, 
horses were brought to North America by Spanish explorers in the 1600s. Small early horses had once lived in North America millions of years ago, but they had died out about 9,000 BCE. Plains Indians began to acquire horses through trading with other tribes or by raiding other tribes. By the late 1700s, horses were common among Plains Indians. Horses changed the way Plains Indians lived. With horses, Plains Indians could travel farther and faster than ever before. It made their nomadic lifestyle easier, allowing them to move their camps from place to place as they followed the bison. Plains Indians also found that they could track and hunt bison more effectively on horseback. Tribes such as the Crow gave up their farming lifestyle to become nomadic hunters. Horses also made them more effective warriors, able to attack their enemies quickly and suddenly. Tell me something that you noticed or heard on this page. I heard and noticed that horses did not come back to North America until the 1600s. So that tells me that Native Americans did most of their traveling by Oh my goodness, that would be crazy. Hunting. Hunting was one of the most important parts of the Plain Indians culture. Plain Indians hunted many animals, but none was more important to them than the bison. The, the nomadic tribes moved from place to place to stay close to the wandering bison. Farming tribes of the prairies left their villages each summer to take part in annual hunts. Hunting was a community activity for the people of the Great Plains. Men, women, and children worked together to make a successful hunt. The bravest and most skillful hunters and warriors sometimes acted as the hunt police. Their job was to organize the hunters so that they worked as a team. Plains Indians developed clever techniques for hunting bison. Hunters on foot might sneak up on a herd by covering themselves in wolf skins. This way they could get close to the animals without alarming them. Another strategy was to start grass fires that would frighten the bison into stampeding to their deaths off tall cliffs. After Plains Indians acquired horses, they became skillful riders who could hunt while moving at high speeds. When the hunt was over and the bison were killed, there was still much work to do. Women worked to preserve the meat for future use. They also worked at tanning the bison hide, turning it into leather that could be used for robes and bedding. What did early Plains Indians farm? Farming was the main source of food and wealth for those early Plains Indians that lived in villages. Farming tribes lived on very fertile land along the major rivers of the Great Plains. Hmm, we're going to pause right there. Tell me, what question can I ask from that sentence? Farming tribes lived on very fertile land along the major rivers of the Great Plains. What question? What could I ask in the Ed puzzle from that sentence? Go ahead and tell me. So hopefully you wrote, what does the word fertile mean? So remember, we can ask wonders about words that we don't know. So what does fertile mean? That is a wonder that we could have. With plentiful rain and good growing conditions, that's what fertile means. They could grow more corn in other crops that they needed. Extra crops could be traded with other tribes for metal tools, cloth, bison hides, and other valuable goods. Farming, farming was, the mainly, was mainly the work of women. They planted the fields, tended them, and harvested the crops. Their tools were made from things found in the natural world around them. They used animal bones, horns, and antlers to make hoes and rakes. Women also made clay pots for storing food. The Three Sisters. Corn or maize, as American Indians called it, was the most important crop for most tribes. It grew well in many areas, was easily stored, and could be prepared in a variety of ways. It could be used in soups and stews, or it could be dried and pounded into cornmeal. Women used wooden tool called pestles to grind dried corn into meal. 
farming tribes almost always planted corn alongside squash and beans. Corn stalks provided a pole for bean vines to climb. The leaves of the squash plants helped keep the soil moist. Because the three crops worked so well, they were often called the three sisters. Farming tribes also grew pumpkins, sunflowers, and tobacco. What were early Indian communities like? The nomadic hunters of the Great Plains lived in teepees. Teepees were made of bison hides sewn together. The hides covered a frame of wooden poles that formed a cone shape. Inside the teepee was a fire pit lined with rocks. Beds made of bison hides were arranged around the fire. People often decorated teepee covers with painted figures that represented the family or showed the great deeds of the hunter or warrior who lived inside. As people moved across the Great Plains, they carried their teepees with them. Teepees could be quickly taken apart and put back together with each move to a new camp. On this page, I want you to tell me what you noticed or noticed or wondered. So I wondered how, how long would it take for them to take apart a teepee? I also noticed that this picture shows paintings on a teepee. It says large teepees may be made of as many as 18 bison hides. All right, so they lived in teepees. Now we're going to talk about houses of farming peoples. Since the farming tribes of the prairie did not move across, around as much as the nomadic hunters, they built more permanent homes. The Wichita and Caddo people built grass houses by covering a circular framework of wooden poles with thick bundles of grass called thatch. Other farming tribes lived in earth lodges with dome-like roofs. These lodges were made of heavy timber posts covered by willow branches and layers of sod. So that is what this shows right here. People entered their lodge through a covered tunnel. This led to a roomy interior that could hold a number of families or related persons. Like the hunting tribes, farming people also used teepees, but only for their yearly hunting trips into the Great Plains. Villages. Oh, we're actually not going to read that page. And one more page. All right. The roles of men and women. Men and women each had their own roles to play in daily life. For men, life revolved around hunting and warfare. They trained and tended horses, and they made weapons such as bows, arrows, and lances. They also were leaders, making decisions about where their people should hunt and whether they should start a war. Women tended farm fields and homes. They put up and took down teepees. They made clothing, hauled firewood, and prepared meals. They cared for children and carried infants on their back on their back in baby carriers called cradle boards as they worked. A day in the life of an early Plains Indian child. On a typical day in the early plain in an early Plains Indians village, children might listen to storytellers about the history of their people. Boys might prepare to become warriors and hunters by learning to ride horses and shoot bows and arrows at targets. Girls would probably learn the skills of cooking, sewing, and other crafts as they helped their mothers. Family was very important to early as well as modern American Indians. Adults taught, taught children the skills they would need to survive. All right, so those are the pages that we were going to read today. I want you to tell me what is one more thing you noticed in this book. And I want you to tell me what is one more thing you wondered in this book. So on this page, we have some different notices and wonders that you might have had. So on this side, they talk about notices. And on this side, they talked about wonders. So the, so some notices and wonders that we could have had from page five was there are many names for Native Americans and tribes are unique groups. A wonder that we might have had is why did Columbus think he was in Asia? On page eight, some wonders that you might have had were, or some notices, some things that you saw, the Great Plains cover 14 states 
and it talks about grasses like in the other book. A wonder that you might have had is what does the word immense mean? And are the Great Plains the prairie? Ooh, those are good wonders. All right, on page 10, you might have noticed they say bison in this book. And there are many tribes from the Great Plains. Some wonders that you might have had was what does nomadic mean? So we talked about that. And what are the horses pulling in the photo? So we can ask wonders about pictures too. On page 12, some notices that you might have had are the Eastern tribes farmed. They didn't move around and more rain helped some tribes farm. Some wonders that you might have had was how did people grow their crops? And why are the houses round in the photo? Ooh, those are so a wonder that you might have had is why were the homes round? On pages 14 and 19, when it talked about what they ate, you could have noticed that bison are big and fast. People lived in teepees. The bison were like a walking store. That was a sentence. So you might have noticed that. And the hunters had sneaky ways to kill buffalo. Some wonders that we can think about is where did the people get the dogs? Does nomadic mean to move? And how close can the hunters get to the buffalo? Those are really good wonders. All right, 20 through 23 talked about what kind of crops they grew. It said corn, squash, and beans are called the three sisters. They help each other grow. They use teepees as houses so they could move to new camps. So those are some things that you could have heard. Some questions that you might have had are, does that picture have prairie sod on the house? Ooh, so when it was talking about the houses that they lived in, is that prairie sod that is on the house? And were the houses comfortable inside? That is a very good question. All right, and the last, the last page that we read when it talked about the people and their jobs, a notice that you could have had was that men and women were not equal. They didn't do the same jobs and they both had to work hard. Some questions that you might have had when listening to that page was, were women ever allowed to hunt? Did men ever help with the children? And what's a cradle board? All right, so those are examples of some notices and wonders. I, Even though I can't see you right now, I want you to give me a thumbs up. Did you have some of the same notices and wonders? All right, so we're going to move on to our deep dive. And if you do foundations with me, this will be kind of familiar to you. So we are going to talk about irregular plural nouns. Remember, a noun is a person, place, thing, animal, or idea. A noun stands for one thing. Plural nouns are when we have more than one thing, and that is when we have a base word and we add that suffix es or s to tell us that we have more than one thing. Irregular plural nouns, if something is irregular, that means it is not regular. So it is not like plural nouns that we have spelled in red before. So irregular plural nouns mean more than one, but are sometimes different or the same as the base word noun. So here are some nouns, some plural nouns from our book that we just read. <clears throat> So many is going to mean plural. So some of these some of these plural nouns have that s or es to tell us that it's more than one thing. But in this list, I want you to tell me in the ed puzzle what is a plural noun that does not have es or s at the end. So bison means more than one buffalo. Horses teepees, calves, tribes, and children. I want you to tell me in the Ed Puzzle, what are two plural nouns that do not have S or ES at the end? So bison and children were the two plural nouns. They're two irregular plural nouns that do not have that S or ES. And when we look at them, so these are when we have more than one, 
and this is when we have one. So bison stays the same when we talk about one buffalo or more than one buffalo. Horses, we just added that S at the end to tell us that we have more than one. Teepee, if we have more than one, we add that S and it changes to teepees. Calf is when we talk about like a baby cow. Calf ends in LF, but when we have more than one calf, it becomes calves. So calves is an irregular plural noun. It is complete, it is really different from the base word. Tribe, if I have one, it's tribe. If I have more than one, it's tribes. And if I have one child, it's child. But if I have more than one, it's children. So we can say there's many children, but one child. There's many calves, but one calf. So when we are reading books or when we are spelling or when we are writing, sometimes our plural nouns are going to be different. So calves and children and bison are a good example. We do not always add S or ES to let us know we have more than one thing. All right, Smarties, as always, keep that growth mindset. Good learners do hard things. And I will see you tomorrow with another lesson about our Plains Indians. All right, guys, I'll see you later and happy learning.